everyone, it's Kathy, and welcome back to my craft room and here on my YouTube channel, Kathy's Random Acts of Stampin'. Today, I'm going to show you a new bundle that will be available uh, through the online exclusive starting on March the 5th. So I get, because I am a demonstrator, I get to buy these products a little bit ahead of time so I have time to play with them and demo for you so you can see the beauty of it. This is absolutely a gorgeous set. I have always been a fan of Magnolias and it stems from way back when I was a little girl. But um, I did this card and it's just a little side fold uh, card like that. Very simple, easy, fun fold. This is a, a definitely a great one if you're a beginner. This would be something that anybody could do. Uh, so I, want, I always try to do things that are uh, at every crafter's level. So some things are more advanced. Some things are very simple. Some things are just basically stamps and ink and paper. But this one does entail some die cutting. We're going to do the same card using the same set, same fold, but we're going to change it up with our designer series paper and the different colors. So, like I said, this is a beautiful stamp set. It is the cling stamp, and I've got one of the sentiments out right now. We probably will be using it. I'm not sure yet. But we're going to take out this big stamp and probably this one. No, I think I'm going to do this one. I think I'll do that one. So we are going to work on this and see what we can come up with. And I think we can come up with something very pretty. We, I'm going to use a boho blue card base. And all, all this is is a half a sheet of cardstock. It is eight and a half by five and a half. I scored it in two places in the middle at five and a half. And for this particular one here, it's two and one eight. So when you fold it, you have this fun little fold that goes like this. So that is going to be the basis of our card. And I'm going to take my bone folder and go ahead and crease this down really good. Just like that. I always like my fun folds to be um, burnished really well so that they lay. You want your cards to lay really nice. So this will ensure that it does. All right, now that we got our card folded and everything, and we got this cute little fold, and I did I did tell you that this was five and a half, and that was a mistake on my part. It is scored at two and one eighth and four and a quarter. So, and that correction will be in the PDF tutorial. So, one and one eighth, I mean, two and one eighth. Let me double check. Two and one eighth and four and a quarter so that gives you this little side uh, fold like that the other thing i did is from that three pack of paper that's called uh, flight and airy i cut a piece of the designer series paper and this is cut at one and now this is cut at two uh five and a quarter and we are going to layer that on here just like that so I'm just going to use some liquid glue. You can use whatever adhesive you prefer. But for me, I like the, um, you know, that side is very pretty as well. So now it makes me wonder if I want to go with, with this one. Hmm. No, I think I'm going to stick with this particular one. So I'm going to take some liquid glue and just run some liquid glue all the way down this piece something like that and then i'm going to center it onto this piece and i'm turning it sideways because that helps me line everything up a little bit better and give it a good press and i like to go back over it with my bone folder just to kind of press that glue out and make sure that it gets pushed out all the way to the edges a little bit of glue up there. Okay, so now we're ready to do some stamping. And this is where I'm going to bring in my small uh, misty stamp positioner. And we're going to take just a piece of white cardstock. And this piece is actually, you don't have to, it can be any scrap that will fit your stamp. This is four and a half by uh, five and three fourths. So it's just going to give you a nice piece that's going to sit in to your 
uh, stamp positioning tool like that. And I'm going to position my magnolias. This is the large flower. And this is what you get in here. You get that large flower. You get this one. You get the small one, which I'm going to uh, stamp as well. I think I'll put that one right there. And you, and you get this leaf. And I love that bud, but we're not going to use that today. We are just going to go with these. So I'm going to close this up and let it pick up my stamps. And then I'm going to ink these up with um, Memento. The reason I'm using Memento is because I'm going to go back and I'm going to color using my alcohol um, blends. The Stampin' Blend markers are alcohol markers. And those are, I love to color with those because they make you look like you know what you're doing, even if you don't. So I'm going to press that down. Like so. And it looks like my flower needs just a little bit more. So I'm going to go right into the middle of that flower and put a little bit more ink on it. And then I'm just going to press right in there. Much, much better. Now that's a beautiful coloring. And it doesn't say on the packaging that this is a distinctive um, stamp set, but it looks very distinctive in the fact that it um, it looks like all the shading has been done for us. So I'm not sure if that's the case or not. I'm going to put a little bit of stamp cleaner on my cleaning cloth. And I'm just going to give these a little bit of a rub just to get off a little bit of that ink, keep it from staining. Although the red rubber stamps don't stain as bad as the photopolymer. But I always say a stained stamp just shows that the stamp has been loved. It means that you have used it. Now, the stays on will stain even your um, your red clean stamps. So if you're using stays on, uh, and stays on ink definitely has its place in your craft room. But for this, no, my um, memento is perfect for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece out. I'm going to stick my magnets back on so I don't lose them. And we're going to go ahead and color this piece. I'm going to leave Misty sitting up there because I don't want her to go too far away. And I'm going to grab, I have two colors and my color lifter. So I have shaded spruce and bubble bath. And that's what I want to color these with. I am going to use my heat tool on setting one just to make sure this ink is set and dried. So I'm going to go up just to setting one and just make sure that ink is good and dry. This will ensure that you get no smudging. And I'll do it from both sides so my paper doesn't warp or turn. And if you stamp this in advance and just let it sit while you're doing something else, you wouldn't have to do this. But for the sake of the video, I'm doing it. Just for that reason, oh, I think we're good with that. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to use the, the light shaded spruce. And I'm going to just color in all of my leaves. The shaded spruce is such a pretty color. And it just blends so well with the... And see, this is why I wanted my color lifter. You can see I've already gotten some green on that petal. This will act like an eraser and it will push that color back off of that white. It's basically just a plain alcohol marker. And it's so great for doing, uh, if you do make a, a little boo-boo, you can correct it with that. So it's always a great marker to have. So I'm doing, I'm gonna color these. Can you get the gist of what I did? I went back in with my dark shaded spruce and I just went over top of the veins. And if you want to, you can go back in using the light and then just kind of blend everything together. This just makes for beautiful coloring. 
everything looks so um, well blended and the alcohol markers are great for this. They just really make you look like you're, you know what you're doing and you are a colorist. So now for the pink, I'm going to use the lightest bubble bath and we are going to go in and just hit on the marks like that very lightly just anywhere that the artist left some the little detail marks just color over those very lightly and i'm not going to finish this one because i want to i've already done one but i wanted to give you a little bit of what i did and let me show you what it looks like when I finished it. I have it ready to go into my die cut machine. So that's what it looks like when everything's done and it's dried. They're very subtle because you want to keep your magnolia as white as you can to keep the true form of a magnolia. So I'm going to bring up my stamp and cut and emboss machine. And with this one, I thought I might need to go back over it and restamp. But I don't think I did. That's why I left everything in here. And had I needed to do that, I could have laid this back down in here and stamped right back over top of it. Well, not this one, but the one I was just doing. So I've got an extra set now, should I need it, that will be very easy for me to finish coloring to go on an, another card. So um, it's always a good rule when you're making cards to make more than one. Uh, and usually for me, I do two because I do a prototype. Uh, to show you what we're doing and then actually make the card that uh, I'm showing you how to make. So I'm going to go ahead and load up my machine with my dab with my plates. I have a number one, a number two die adapter, a number three cut plate, and I'm going to cover with another number three cut plate. But this one's not straight, so I want to straighten this up just a little bit. And that happens when you have left them on for a while. The tape can come loose. So I'm just going to line everything up like that. And now we're ready and to push this through. So I put my cover plate over and just crank it in. I'm still debating on whether I want to use the boho blue. And I do have a piece right here. I think I am. I'm going to cut my stylish shape dies. And I'm going to use that larger ring. And I'm just going to put that right here on the edge of my, my paper or my cardstock. And I'm going to run this through. Something like that. Now we can go ahead and pull this off. You gotta love your, your die cut machine when it cuts so easy and flawless every time. And that is definitely the case with the stamp and cut and emboss machine. I get beautiful cuts almost every time. And I'm gonna showcase that something like that and i want to do it on the front of my card like this and i am thinking that i may want to try to decide what color i want to put back behind here i don't know if i want to do the calypso coral it's a little too stark for me it doesn't speak to me on that maybe i want white Maybe just a piece of white cardstock might be just the ticket. I think the white is exactly what I needed for back here. So I'm going to cut a piece of white cardstock. I'm going to have to grab a piece. Let's bring this up and we're going to cut it at four inches. Five and one fourth. And 
in my mind. Let's light that in like that. Okay, I think what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and put my magnolia on my circle. Something like that. And I want to pop that up with dimensionals. So let me grab uh, dimensionals. A couple more. Just to make sure everything is anchored. Let's see. Yeah, that gives some nice definition. I'm also going to take Boho Blue, and I'm going to edge around this piece just a little bit to give a little extra definition. So here's a piece of cardstock that I've been using as a scrap. Just to give that a little bit of extra color around the edges and it just all it's going to do is give depth it's gorgeous so now i'm going to go ahead and pull off my backers Stick that right there. It's gorgeous. And I'm going to leave this sitting in. I'm not going to glue this in just yet. I want to make sure that I've got my outside decorated exactly the way I want it before I go any further. And I love that. I think that frames that magnolia beautifully. And we can put a sentiment down here. And I think for the sentiment, I'm going to also use my stylish shape dies. And let's let's do the happy birthday. That's a beautiful happy birthday. I think it will fit on the smaller banner. So let's give it a try. We'll stamp it and then see if it's going to work for us. And I think what I want to do is I'm going to stamp it on the boho blue. So I put it down to the bottom of my paper. And I'm going to grab the block. Ink it up. Pretty. Nice coverage. Now the question is if this is going to fit. I think it's going to be tight, but I think we can get it. So let's let's go ahead and anchor it down. And I'm going to take my Tim Holt scissors and I'm going to cut this piece off. Well, we'll just have to put it back on. <laughs> I didn't want to, I didn't want that whole piece to go through my um, stamp and cut and embossing machine. So let's center it again. Take those off. Get a nice center on it. Bring up our stamp and cut and emboss machine again. And our cut plates. And we're ready to push this through. Oh, and I think that's working. That looks really pretty. So we have our sentiment. So 
So now we are ready to set this down here. This about like that. We can put this. You can do it across the middle if you like, or you can do it down under here like that. I like it down because I don't want anything to cover up my beautiful magnolia. So I'm going to put, at this point, I'm going to put glue. I know I can't go past that point with my glue. like that and now we're ready to do the same with this and I want that to come down where that leaf just hangs right over the, the edge of that and we're going to put glue just on the half of this so I'm just going to draw myself a line and then make sure that I stay on that side with my glue and turn it around and We do have a little bit of glue up there. Let's move it over just a hair. Looks good. So once I know I got it, then I'm giving everything a press, and that is good to go. Now we have this little piece, and what I want to do is I want to put this over in this corner because that's going to hide behind here when you close your card. But when you open it, you're going to have that cute little flower there. And behind that, I am going to use a little bit of the boho glue. And I'm just going to ink up, bring my little piece back out. And I'm just going to very lightly make a little circle. Just like that. I wanted just a little hue of color behind my flower. You can see it just looks like it's giving off a nice little glow. I like that. So for this one, I'm just going to glue it straight down like that. And now you've got this piece. You could write a message, you could stamp a message. Happy day would be nice, but I think it might be too big. Let's see if that will hide behind two inches. It looks like it might. So maybe we can do oh happy day right there. Let's try that. And I think I'm going to stamp it in the boho blue. And that comes from, it's in the annual catalog, and it's Candace Expressions, in case you're interested in where this comes from. It is in the annual catalog, and um, Candace Expression, you got a with sympathy, sending sunshine and rainbows, thanks so much, and oh, happy day. Great sentiment stamp set. So I'm going to set this down right about here. And that is beautiful. Let's put that, this little piece. And now we can put this together like this. Isn't that beautiful? So I'm going to go ahead and use some liquid glue on the back of this. I'm going to set that in. I 
like that and it does cover everything is covered the magnolia is absolutely stunning like that i love this card so you'll have to let me know of the two cards and let me find the other one They're both done with the same fold. The only thing here is I used the rectangle rather than the circle. Uh, I did stamp some leaves over here and I did the magnolia here in the corner. And, but, and I colored everything a little different on here than I did on here. But it shows you the different variety that you can do with the same fold. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. It is an easy card to make. Anybody can do this. And it was a lot of fun. That's the main thing. If you have fun when you're crafting, that's the most important thing. God bless and keep you. And thank you so much for tuning in with me once again. If you're interested in any of the products you saw me use, I would love the opportunity to earn your business. You can visit my website that's listed below. It will take you to my Stamping Up store where you can purchase any and all of the products you saw me use. Now, the Magnolia, um, the Magnolia Mood stamp and dies will not be available until march 5th it's in the new collection of online exclusives that premiere to our customers on the uh, 5th of march so be on the lookout make your list and you'll be seeing more products coming from me from the online exclusives so stay tuned god bless and keep you and as i always say in closing let everything that you do and say bring glory to our savior he is worthy until next time, God bless you. Bye-bye.